Hey guys, Dude Legit City here. Today in the Game of Vox is not included. We're going to be going over two specific critters, the Sweetles and the Grub Grubs. And that means today's video, we're going to be going over the Divergent Critters. Both of these critters, the Sweetle and the Grub Grubs, are part of the Divergent series. Being part of the same species, although they look very different from each other. They have a lot of similar features. And the Grub Grubs and Sweetles in and of itself tend to the plants to increase the growth speed of either a wild or domesticated plant while also consuming sulfur if you guys want to use them to convert the resources. However, before we get into the rubbing rules and everything you need to know about that, we'll go over the critters in and of itself. The Sweetle, as you can see over here, has a baseline egg chance of giving you a Sweetle egg at 98% and 2% for a Grub Grub egg, meaning that as soon as the Sweetle is hatched, these are going to be your spreads for the different eggs. The Grub Grub, if you guys happen to run into one of these, are going to be having a 33% chance of getting a Sweetle egg, with a 67% chance of giving you a Grub Grub egg. As you can see though, as we hover over the Grub Grub egg chance on both the Sweetle and the Grub Grub, tending to the spinally Grub Fruit plant and the regular Grub Fruit plant, either or, is going to increase the egg chance of getting a Grub Grub egg. For the Sweetle, each tent is going to increase the Grub Grub egg chance by 2%, and the Grub Grub egg is going to go up by 1% per tent by the Grub Grub. So the Grub Grubs do increase their egg chance slower compared to the Sweetle, but start off on a higher percentage. Meaning that most of the time you're going to get a Grub Grub egg, however, if you want to guarantee it, you're going to want to have them tent to either or. Now the Grub plants that we see over here, Grub Fruit and Spindly Grub Fruit, if you have the Spindly Grub Fruit, which is going to be the lesser variation, producing fewer calories, you are going to be able to convert that to a Grub Fruit plant on just one tent. Meaning that each time the Sweetle tends a spinally grub fruit, it will instantly become a regular grub fruit. And that's going to be a one out of one each time, regardless of if it's a Sweetle or a grub grub. Now, another thing about the Sweetles and grub grubs is that they will always try to tend to the spinally grub fruit plant, which is the unevolved version of the grub fruit plant. After they tend it, it will, of course, evolve to the grub fruit. However, when given a choice in a farm area where you have both grub fruits and spindly grub fruits or any other plant, they will actually try to tend to the spindly grub fruits first, as they will evenly distribute the tens and rubs over the spindleys in order for them to evolve each and every one of them. After which, it's going to be random chance which plant they tend. Another thing about this is that the Sweetles actually produce less meat than a grub grub. You can see there's a big size difference that actually converts to uh, 1600 kcals of meat per Sweetle and the Grub Grubs provide 4800 kcals of meat. Meaning that if you guys are trying to ranch these guys for food, you're better off trying to increase the Grub Grub egg chance so that you get three times the meat. Now of course with the meat being a lot more, another thing that's kind of weird is the size of each critter. The Sweetles, the smaller variant as you can see follows the same rules as the other critters dracos hatches pips where it's 12 spaces per critter that means that in the normal ranching room that you would set up that is going to be 96 tiles you're going to be able to fit the normal eight sweetles in there the grub grubs though actually require 16 tiles per critter if you want to ranch grub grubs they're going to require 16 tiles instead of the normal 12. that means in your normal stable ranching room setup for the grooming station you're only going to be able to hold six grub grubs before they start getting cramped and overcrowded so please keep that in mind when you guys are ranching said grub grubs they require more space now looking at them while they're tamed we have two tamed critters right here one sweetle and one grub grub when a sweetle is groomed and tamed the reproductive chance goes up from a base two percent to a 22 percent per cycle meaning that they'll give you an egg within five cycles if they're groomed and happy the grub grubs are going to be a base one percent with the additional ten percent going up to eleven per cycle if they are groomed and happy if you guys are looking to tame these critters those are going to be your increase in egg lane chance if you guys are curious now one last thing about the sweetles is that when they're on the incubator there seems to be a tooltip bug 
over both of the uh, critter eggs. If you hover over the uh, grub grub eggs, there is a base chance of 3% per cycle with the lullaby buff increasing it by 13%. However, this somehow totals up to 17%. I'm not actually sure which value is correct. And that's actually the same for the sweet egg. There is a base 7% with a lullaby of plus 27, yet somehow it's 33. Now, the math doesn't check out, but there is seemingly a tooltip error with the calculations. Not sure which is correct. That is a 1% change between both the eggs. Both the Sweetle and the Grub Grub can consume sulfur. And if we actually go to the database, we'll see that the Sweetle will convert 20 kilograms of sulfur into 10 kilograms of sucrose. This is going to be on a per cycle basis. And with this limited diet choice, that means you guys need to have sulfur in order to ranch these guys and keep them fat. Of course, if you guys don't feed the team critters, they're going to starve, and that's going to be a bad thing. Now, the uh, Grub Grub also will eat the sulfur. However, instead of giving you sucrose, they give you mud. The Grub Grubs actually also eat sucrose, and they also give you mud as a result. Looking at this process line, it's actually better if you guys are looking to generate a lot of mud due to the 5,000 grams versus 30 kilograms we could see that it's a lot better to feed sulfur to the sweetles to get sucrose and then using the sucrose to feed the grub grubs to get mud it is more lucrative to always go into that route as the 50 kilograms per cycle of sulfur will give you about 20 kilograms 25 kilograms of sucrose which is almost enough to give you six times the amount of mud so that being said, it's always better to go with feeding the Sweetles the sulfur and taking the sucrose for the grub grubs. Of course, this is going to be the rate of which you're going to get the resources. And these are the only things that either the Sweetle or grub grub can consume. Now, that being said, sulfur is usually a byproduct of the sour gas boiling process or from a liquid sulfur geyser. Outside of feeding it to the grub grubs and the spinally grub fruit plant, there is not that much use of the sulfur. Uh, along with sucrose, which is only going to be used as a kitchen ingredient or for the rocket engine, you're really not having too many options for these resources. So a lot of the times converting it to mud, which is both dirt and water, is going to be a great option. For the rub rules, you guys probably see that we have a farm over here, a wild farm. If we were to click on a plant, with Sweetle Tending, we could see that the Sweetle Tending growth bonus is 5%. This bonus is always going to last for a full cycle. And then the Grub Grubs have a separate buff that's called the Grub Grub Rub. That's a 50% bonus, also lasting for a cycle. Now, these two bonuses, the Sweetle Tending and the Grub Grub Rub, are not going to stack with each other. And it's going to be the most recent application will override the buff of the other most recently applied application. That means if a Sweetle tends a plant that has the Grub Grub Rub, the Sweetle tending buff is going to override the Grub Grub tending buff. And it's going to mean that you lose 45% of the growth speed. That being said, that means you always want to separate all your Sweetles and your Grub Grub so that they're never in the same room. You want to do this so that you don't accidentally have that chance overwritten. And of course, because of that, you almost always want to have the Grub Grubs. Now, how do the uh, rub rules work? There's going to be a couple things. And before we get started to that, let's talk about what scenarios you need to have in order to have the Grub Grubs actually apply the rub buff. First rule is going to be the uh, Grub Grub plants and the uh, critters. The issue with them is that they actually have to be on the same tile height as the plant. That means that if you have a planter box that is not a solid tile, this means that the Grub Grubs and Sweetles are not able to actually apply the buff on this because they need to be on the same height as the plant. Now, if you guys were to have a farm tile not be on the base tile like that, what you're going to need to do is actually put a regular solid tile or have a second farm tile next to it. The critters of the Divergent series have to stand adjacent on either the left side or the right side of the plant in order to apply the rub buff. For whatever reason, that means that you cannot have a farm setup like this. Even though they have a great animation while climbing up and down, 
and this is the main reason why I love these critters. It's having a farm like this so they have to constantly go up and down isn't feasible as they're not able to provide the rub buff. That being said, planter boxes in and of itself will not work with the grub grubs and you guys have to use a solid tile or you guys could put a solid tile next to it like that so that they can apply the rub buff. The rub buff also only applies to plants that produce a growable product. That means that things like the oxyfer is not actually growing something, it just consumes CO2 to produce oxygen. The Sweetle and Grub Grubs will never rub an oxyfer. Same thing for the Weezwort. The Weezwort chills the gas in the environment, specifically on the base tile. And because of that, they don't produce a good as well. And Grub Grubs and Sweetles will never rub this, as there is probably no effect. Another category of plants are going to be the decor plants. The plants that, you know, only just act as a pretty plant, Blispers, Bluff Briar, Buddy Bud. All these plants don't actually grow anything. And because of that, they actually don't get rubbed. Now, of course, the decor plants in and of itself, typically due to the placement of some of the plant pots, the critters will not be able to reach them anyways. But in the case of the Weez Ward and Oxifern, how they don't actually produce something that's harvestable, they don't get rubbed either. Uh, there's also an exception with the Arbitrary. The Arbitrary is a plant that grows tree branches that you guys could harvest for lumber. Now, very quickly, let's argue that this is the farm tile and then this is the base of the Arbitrary. This is known as the trunk. The Arbitrary has, I believe, it's five to six branches that they have growing maximum out of a total of seven possible tiles. It's these three, these three, and this one above it. Now, those seven tiles here are the areas where the branches can grow. The Sweetles actually rub each individual branch. And what I said before about them only able to rub plants at the same height as they are, they're only going to be able to rub the left tile and the right tile. They will not be able to rub any one of these five up top unless you provide them access with a solid tile. That being said, each individual branch will get rubbed. And now it's probably going to be a good time to go into the rub limits. Those were the rules for when they will apply the rub. And another last rule for that is fully grown plants. If a plant is fully grown and you disabled harvesting on it, or if it's a wild plant and you haven't enabled it, the Sweetles and Grub Grubs will ignore that until it's growing. However, it doesn't have to have actual growth. If the growth gets halted due to atmosphere temperature, the Sweetles will still apply the buff. However, in that one case where the plant is fully grown, the Sweetles will ignore it. Now, limits. That being said, the arbitrary with the seven branches potentially, and I believe it's only six that will always grow, it's going to be each individual branch they could rub. The Sweetles will rub up to, and with the minimum of one, maximum of seven, more or less, at least in my playtesting, that seemed to be the limits, where they would rub anywhere randomly between that range. Now, that being said, it's random. However, there are some factors that seem to influence how often they rub. So, the rub chance, we went over that. They will rub over the course of a cycle anywhere between one to seven plants. And the differences between the buff means that you probably want the grub grub buff. Now, the thing about the Sweetles and the grub grubs is that whether or not they're tame or wild, they're going to rub the same amount. However, there is a benefit of having them tame. The benefit is, is that their rub chance is actually tied to how many calories they have. If they are satisfied and fed and have closer to the maximum amount of calories they're supposed to have, they're going to almost always rub six to seven plants. Now, that being said, if I have a tame Sweetle and a wild Sweetle and I don't feed neither of them, the rub chance is the same. It's literally just whether or not the Sweetles or Grub Grubs have access to food. If they do have access to food, they're going to rub closer to the maximum. While if they don't have access to food and their calories get to the very low portion of it, 
even though the uh, wild Sweetle, we can't see the KCALs on it. Much like a plug slug, the hunger and calories actually affect the performance or output. And the plug slug would generate less power with the fewer calories it has. And it seems to be that the Sweetle will rub fewer plants the fewer calorie it has as well. That being said, if you don't use a critter feeder, and if there's sulfur on the ground, maybe the spinal leaf rub fruits, a dupe was trying to supply the fertilizer to that of sulfur and drop it on the ground. If the, the sweet will happens just to eat that, that's actually that increase of calories, pushing it to 10 to up to seven, closer to the maximum. That being said though, if we don't feed them and they're just kind of stagnant and okay with the calories, it is gonna be somewhat random between the one to seven plants they will rub over the course of a cycle but that's going to be the only influencing fact that i have found now that has been the sweetles and the grub grubs these guys are great i love their animations while they're crawling around the double extend the go go gadget legs or of course just a giant sweetle climbing up and over things it's always a great little animation not only that they're great for increasing the growth speed of the wild plants they also stack with the farmer's touch from the farm station, that is a additive bonus, meaning that 100% plus the 50% means that your plant grows about 2.5 times faster, I believe, because they already have their normal 100% growth speed because it's not hindered by anything. This means that you could grow something like a grub fruit plant over the course of three and a half cycles versus the actual eight cycle domesticated growth time. Of course, though, that's going to be one of the big benefits that's only if you really need to crank out the food or just don't want to have that many jobs for your farmers. Have a smaller condensed farm growing, fertilize, grub, 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 food just means you get more calories faster. But of course, guys, that has been all things Sweetle and Grub Grubs. If you guys have any questions about this, leave a comment down below. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And of course, guys, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank you, guys.